Cyberpunk 2077 is literally hours away, even though hours can feel like days or sometimes even weeks. It is honestly just right around the corner, and if you're as excited as I am to get your hands on this thing and get started in Night City, then you definitely have come to the right place. Now, these are 11 tips and tricks that I think that you guys are going to want to know about before getting started inside of Night City, so let's go ahead and get started right now. Oh, but before we go any further in today's episode, make sure that you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. Also, make sure that you guys are sharing these videos with everyone that you know and everywhere that you possibly can because I do want to have some giveaways eventually here on the channel and that's exactly how we're gonna do that and if you guys can make sure that you guys watch this video in its entirely that would be greatly appreciated cyberpunk 2077 is a completely different type of video game now some things will definitely seem familiar but in other cases they will have you completely fighting against your instinct so let's go ahead and get started with the 11 things that will help you guys along your journey now the first point that I want to be able to go over is pacing yourself. Now Cyberpunk 2077 is both an action game and it is also a role playing game but not necessarily at the exact same time. You can spend literally hundreds of hours investigating, traveling, building relationships, infiltrating, hacking and discovering everything that Night City has to offer and honestly a lot of their cutscenes will rival Hollywood movies it is absolutely incredible to witness now cyberpunk 2077 is in no hurry and honestly that's why i believe you shouldn't be either now the next point that i want to go over here kind of goes along with the first one but instead of pacing yourself it is slowing down a little bit now they might seem like they're very very the same but they are not and what do i mean by this then well, this is an open world environment and you got to get from one place to another, right? And a majority of your time, you're going to be spending that driving. And honestly, getting around in an open world environment and driving at a slow pace can be kind of boring. But if you want to get from one place to another without incident, you need to slow down. Otherwise, you're going to be mowing down pedestrians, outrunning the, NP the NCPD all the time. And that is not what you want to be dealing with at every opportunity when you're playing this game. Side jobs are gonna be everywhere, but they are completely manageable. So early in the game, you're gonna start receiving a ton, and I repeat, a ton of phone calls and text messages regarding things about what people want you to do in and around Night City. Now these could be side jobs, gigs, hustles, etc., and they are gonna be coming all the time. So Cyberpunk 2077 alerts you to side jobs based on your current location. Say you're going to be driving around Night City on your way from or to a main job. And you're going to get a phone call about a side job. And odds are that if you stop and look at your journal, you're going to discover that the side job is only a few blocks away. So you can definitely kind of just go off of your main course and go and complete that if that's something that you would like. Or you can completely let them pile up. It's completely up to you. But the main story will let you know when it's all right for you to kind of go and tackle these side missions. Now, the next point that I want to go over is complete optional objectives. Now, this should be pretty self-explanatory, but honestly, inside a Cyberpunk 2077, if you want to be able to further V's story, then there are going to be side or optional objectives that you want to be able to do because ultimately it can change the game in some way or at least open up some options later in the game. So you guys well, may as well burn a few hours into getting some of these done. Quick save all the time and every time that you possibly can. Right now, Cyberpunk 2077 has all kinds of bugs. Now, I'm hoping that the day zero or even the day one patch will fix a majority of these issues. But if you get into the habit of saving, just in case something goes completely bizarre or haywire, you can actually go back and actually redo something that you just got done completing if something happens. You can quick save by entering the menu and tap either triangle, Y, or F5, and then that's it. If something happens, just reload. Technically, there are no classes in Cyberpunk 2077 because they are made exactly how you make them. At the beginning of the game, you must choose between three backstories. You get to pick the Nomad, the Street Kid, the Corpo, and they're all life paths of V. Now, I do have a separate video going over the three different life paths. So if you guys want to make sure that you guys check that out for more detailed information on life paths, make sure that you guys go ahead and do that right now. But in any other game, you would think of these as classes, and they really aren't here. 
They are only backstories, which they kind of form your version of V, which is going to be the main character. Each of these has their own introductory prologue mission, but every version of V begins with a very similar build. The only difference is the backstory. So again, the Nomad, the Street Kid, or the Corpo, which gives you a bit of flavor to your character. You're going to be spending the rest of the game earning experience to pump into the world and mold your character as V into whatever way that you would like. So pick whatever you want for whatever reason you feel is appropriate. Make sure that you guys go ahead and quick scan for loot. So quick scan every time that you walk into a new area. This could be a building, a brand new room, maybe even a new street. You just have to press L2, LB, or tab pretty much any time that you possibly can because you never know what you're actually gonna get. And in most cases, you're actually gonna find crates holding some kind of solid loot that you wouldn't have necessarily noticed if you guys weren't doing that quick scan function. Now you're definitely gonna wanna be curious in Cyberpunk 2077. What do I mean by this? Well, you're gonna wanna role play as a conversationalist, taking every opportunity to ask all the questions that you possibly can, especially the optional ones, which are going to be highlighted in blue. You're going to learn a lot more about the world doing this. You're actually going to uncover some of the optional mi missions by doing this as well. And this is where you're going to be spending a ton of your time. Knowledge is the key, especially when you are confused. And Cyberpunk 2077 is also confusing. So make sure that you guys are basically digging into everything, especially when it comes to the conversations, as much as you possibly can. Headshots are actually going to disappoint you inside of Cyberpunk 2077. Now take this for example, any other game that you play, a headshot is considered just an instant kill, like Red Dead Online where everybody goes for a headshot instantly. Cyberpunk 2077 version of a headshot, it deals some damage. Now this is confusing, but it makes sense if you understand how Cyberpunk 2077 calculates damage with the weapons that you guys are using. So upgrading your weapons, pour points into whatever skill that is associated with the weapon that you are currently using and look for the perks that will increase damage over the long term. They're all directly related. In enough time leveling and upgrading, you'll turn your headshots into one kill shots and instant kills, but they have to be under the right circumstances. The trick is knowing that there is a lot of math behind the scenes that determines how your damage is actually given to the NPCs inside of Night City or Cyberpunk 2077. Now the last two things that I want to be able to go over today's episode are talking about the attribute points and perk points. Now these could definitely have a video all on its own and I definitely will have one coming hopefully in the next couple of days, especially when we can fully get our hands on Cyberpunk 2077. But let's go and talk a little bit about the attribute points and the perk points right now. So these things will let you buy options. You can spend more on these on V, your character. That will increase a variety of things that you will be able to do. So you have attribute points, which will make V stronger. And they will help you in broad categories like body, reflexes, technical ability, intelligence, and also cool. And then there's perk points, which offer a bonuses in skill trees that are going to be under the, underneath the attribute category itself. So for example, if you want to be able to unlock every single door that you see, pump all of your points into body, which is strength, to force them open. Or you can also go into your technical ability so that you can pick the locks. Spend attribute points and perk points when they will truly matter. So Cyberpunk 2077 will ask you to spend some of these points during your character creation. And it's a moment when you virtually know nothing about what's going on inside of the game. There really aren't any wrong answers here, so go with whatever your instincts are, and your earlier decisions won't really determine what type of playstyle that you're going to have inside of Night City or with your character V. As you are playing, you're going to be earning XP and also leveling up, and if you don't really know where to put these attribute points or these perk points, then the solution here is to hold on to them until they truly make a difference and you'll know exactly when that's gonna happen. So for example, you're gonna be spending a lot of time in a conversation and occasionally a dialogue option will require a very certain attribute value. It's gonna show up with like a little circle and I'll have a number behind it. So basically it's showing the minimum requirement for your speaking your mind. And then that's when you can actually pour these attributes or these perks into what you need them to do. So you can return to the game and then you can speak freely 
because now you have that attribute level that is required to have that dialogue. Another example would be is when you spot a locked door, you can spend an attribute point on technical ability, which among other things allows you to unlock doors. It's as simple as that. Just use them when you need them. Now that concludes the 11 things that I believe that you need to know before starting your adventure inside of Cyberpunk 2077. Now if you guys did find this information helpful, make sure that you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated. Also, like I mentioned earlier, if you guys really want to help me grow, then eventually I can have some giveaways here on the channel. And if you guys want that, then you already know what to do. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it, and you guys stay gaming.